Instead of this boring, dull thing, how about this professional layout? It's time for you to use Formula 1 with all the HUDs, telemetry, and everything else. And in this video, we're going to explain how to install it from scratch all the way to making your broadcast. And we're going to start by talking first, comprehensive details about the installation of SimHub. It's important to go step by step in a careful and detailed manner so you understand everything that needs to be done. So let's get started here. This SimHub, after you access it, you'll receive a PDF with the correct version, but this is the recommended version here. We don't recommend using another version as it might cause some issues. So after you've downloaded SimHub, I've already downloaded it here. I'm going to extract it to your computer and then you'll double click. Click here to do the normal installation, right? This is very basic at this point. Here, it's important that you don't change this folder, okay? Don't change this folder, it affects functions. If you change some functions like showing the driver's photo, for example, it will not show up. This is actually specifically only for those who are using telemetry of League's commentators. All leave, everything enabled. Click next and then click install. Wait for it to install, it takes a while. All right, the installation is done. So indeed, we're just going to start SimHub here for the very first time. SimHub is a program that isn't very lightweight. It needs some things, at least an intermediate level machine, okay, and perhaps some additional components. It's mentioning that it's a free program. It has a free version that will work for everything. But it's such a really cool program that I absolutely made my contribution there many years ago. Incredibly $3, 3 euros, something like that. And then you even have some additional extra functions for frames per second or FPS. Okay. But for those who don't use it, it'll be 20 frames per second. That's a lot. All right. And it's also worth mentioning that this will work. Our telemetry will work on any platform. Okay. PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So... Obviously, you need to have a computer to do the, the bridge. SimHub acts as a bridge between the peripherals, between the video game, the PC itself, the phone, the tablet, etc. So let's go. I actually installed it here. I'm not going to set it to start with Windows. I don't want it to start automatically. And the first thing we're going to do in SimHub, when you start it, you'll see all the games here. We're going to go here. Hide. All. We're going to hide everything. And the only one we're going to leave is Formula 1 2023, even though it's Formula 1 2024. We'll get to that later. You'll understand why we're here. Activate it. In Formula 1 2023, you just hit enter. I'll hit enter here. Oh, that worked well. We did the first setup. Now on to the next configuration. Down there, here on the left, click on remove features. We're going to leave only Dash Studio activated. And this one, oh, devices also removes the keyboard. We're going to switch this around. Oh, does the emulator turn off and you turn on the input? And then we're just going to leave statistics activated. This here. Oh, so just statistics, keyboard, input, and dash studio, which we're going to keep on. You saw that our game up there is written Assetto Corsa, right? So we need to change the game. I just come here. I click here. Then it will activate the game. It activated up there. You see, so to access the networks I'm going to talk about now, I'm leaving the link to Saga Store down here. We have all the telemetry that is available. Is that good? So you can access all of them from there. From now on, we're going to talk about how to install these telemetries. And the procedure is the same for all of them. So let's get started. At this moment, you can close SimHub. Go ahead, close SimHub, and you'll have access to a folder like this one. Open a new file explorer. And where is the SimHub folder? Program files, each site, SimHub. It will appear here at this moment. We're going to do the transfer of files from one folder to another. Open this folder, and we have two other folders inside that you received from the purchase. And here we're going to go into it. Select these files here, Ctrl C, and go to the installed SimHub folder. Click here anywhere. Do a Ctrl V, copy and paste. Our files are installed here. You've copied everything here. Can we then close these two folders? There's one more little folder open here that we're going to leave. For now, let's open SimHub again. All right, SimHub opened with our new files in the original SimHub folder. Activate all three of these here, all right? And we're also going to activate this so it shows up in the menu. Okay, let's activate everything and hit OK here. It's going to restart. Now, the only setting after installing the files, we're going to come here to Gerswallow. Let's click on MISC, and here we're going to leave it like this. Activate the first one. Second deactivated, third activated, fourth activated, fifth deactivated. That's it, all right? Great, so we finished the... SimHub setup here, okay? The next step is the installation of the HUDs themselves. Open the folder where it is, and it even has a SimHub logo here, see? 
sim hub dash file, we're going to double click it and wait for it to load. It has to show up on the screen at some point. It must appear here. Okay, it might take a little while to show up. There it is. We come here, click on import for sim, and that's it, all good. Now, ours is already showing up. Ah, but where do I access it? Come here to the test studio. If you bought a dashboard, it will show up here. If you bought the Verlay, the telemetry is Verlay, but it's either one or the other. All right, so in our case here, we set up the engineer's dash. It has to show up down here. It comes in alphabetical order and it's right here. Here is our dash. What's the last step? Let's go, let's find it. We found our HUD here. And now we're going to set up the HUD. SimHub communicates with the computer and talks to the video game. All right, so first of all, come here and click on Start, then click on Phone or Tablet. Now here you can either scan the QR code or type in the IP that will appear on your screen. It's not my IPC, you have to use the IP from your screen and it will highlight that the IP is what's shown there. Oh, HTTP colon double slash. That's not what you're going to type, okay? That's what's going to show up. There are four numerical sequences, for example. There's 17, 2, 21, 15, 22. See, include the dots. All right, I'll leave it on the screen too because you have to put this IP in the video game, just a note. Before we continue with the video, I've put the game settings on the screen. You're going to go to the telemetry menu and set it up like this. Oh, he was putting it in via IDP. Yes, transmission mode via IDP. Then the IP address, you'll enter the address that appears there in Sim Hub 27.7c7 there. Don't change it. Don't change the 20H at the UDP format. We're going to change it to 2023. Remember that in Sim Hub we set it to 2023. It has to be 2023 here too. Set your telemetry to public and show it as online. You also leave it in Sim. And you will also have to enter this IP on your phone. On your phone on Android, now Sim Hub even has an app. I recorded the screen here, both from the iPhone and from Android, and I'm going to put it here. And as we go along, I'll do a recording over this video explaining to you how to do it. And from there, it's already working. And there's also the WhatsApp group with all the support. That's what you need. Well, so um, this is the setup video. I hope you enjoyed it. My WhatsApp is also here in the description. If you want to talk to me or have any questions, just reach out, okay? So let's go. For those on Android, I, I scanned the QR code there. Do you see that it shows a download option at the top? We can download SimHub for the phone. In my case, it gives a security warning, but it's all right. I know it's an okay program there. It also gave me a warning that I need to allow this installation. So I opened it there. I put it here, authorized permission. I confirmed to install app installed. I clicked to open it and then I entered my IP, right? It looks like a different IP than the one in the video there because those were different moments that I recorded different machines, so that's why. And you saw that I even got the IP wrong there and then it didn't connect, so you have to be really careful. There, do you see any difference there? I put the point there. I typed it in again correctly until it connected and worked. And it stays with an app on the phone, really. All right, so that's how you're going to access it from your phone. Remember that you always need to keep SimHub running on the computer, turned on, and both have to be on the same network, okay. Both have to be on the same Wi-Fi network there. The computer can be connected via cable and the phone via Wi-Fi, but they have to be on the same network. For the iPhone guys, scan the QR code, click there. It will open directly the SIM hub screen on the phone. And then down there, you're going to drag it down there. Do you see? Add to the home screen. You click there and it will turn into an app, all right? So next time you'll go straight there. Remember that they have to be on the same network, okay? The phone can be on Wi-Fi and the computer can be on cable or the computer can be on Wi-Fi too, but both have to be on the same network. Obviously, the computer has to be on all the time, all right? That's it. Hey there, drivers, leagues, league owners and commentators. So let's talk about how to install it. And just to let you know, this was done by me. Nice to meet you. My name is Fernando and we're going to talk about that. Let's go. This video is specifically aimed at those who have already acquired or want to acquire the telemetry that has, for example, these functions, right? Uh, it's worth mentioning that the function of the car here, what it has is there's front wing damage and tire wear. There's no floor damage and no rear wing damage here, okay? It doesn't have that either. Formula 2 doesn't work. Formula 2, 
and also due to a problem and a limitation of SimHub. With Formula One and several other things, there's also no support for formation laps. You can't include a warm-up lap, formation lap in the lobby, so this HUD won't work during the race. If you use a formation lap or you remove the formation lap from your league, just a heads up that it doesn't work. Okay, now what we're going to talk about here, how do you install everything correctly there on, on your computer? The only difference is that when you got this package here, you have four HUDs that you're going to set up. You will also receive a file that will already have the correct position of the HUDs. Because we use the HUDs, this double HUD there, which has the names of the drivers on top of the game's original HUD, and the times of the drivers are the game's times. So the position has to be just right, the size has to be just right, and everything is configured here for you. The driver's times are the game's times. So the position has to be just right, the size has to be just right, and everything is configured here for you. You just need to copy and paste it into your OBS. First of all, let's open our file explorer here. How are we going to put the driver's names? You're going to come to this folder here. We're going to go to program files 86. Let's find the SimHub folder here. Found the SimHub folder. Let's go to dash templates. And then in GS options, you're going to have a lot less than what you have here. What do I advise you to do? Get to this part here. Click here with the right mouse button and click on pin to quick access. It's not showing up for you, is it? I'm seeing here that it's not showing up, but when you click on pin to quick access, it will appear on the left side and then you'll have easy access to that folder. We open this folder, you'll get to this path. Here are the things I use in stop and go. So I have all the lists here all set up. So what happens here? Oh, all the work that this is the name that doesn't have the category names here. So the what I'm going to do here is the name. My category here is Super Pro F1. So I go here and change it. For example, I'm going to commentate on Formula 2 today here on Stop and Go. So I go and set it up. For instance, Super Pro stays in my list of drivers here. Then I go to F2 and delete it. And I leave it here until the names. There, it has to stay as names, TX. So this is how it has to look here. The name is correct, okay, because this is the file that the program will find to read the driver's names. When you receive it from Stop and Go, after you purchase the product, you'll get this one here. Look, you'll have this one here with the name correct there. It will look like this, okay? It will come with the names of the Formula One drivers, really, okay? And this is the file here that you will change and you'll have to configure it one by one, okay? This is the boring part. So I put it here, it opened what you receive. When you buy the standard version, it comes with the real names of the Formula One drivers, and here on the side, there are the names of the drivers. As we set it up here on Stop and Go, you see what format does it need to be in here? It has to be the driver's name. I'm going to put the number eight here. Eight, same, there. The first name of the driver, and the second name is the name that will appear on most of the HUDs from Stop and Go in your broadcast, cool. So, for example, if I, like Wilgner Medeiros, wanted to show Wilgner, then I reverse his name. I put the last name first and then the driver's first name. Like in my case here, I use the number 85. So I go there, I put my last name first, Fernandez, because I want Bruno to show up in the broadcast there on the scoreboard. And at various other times, it will also show just one name. At some other point, at some other moment, only the two names will appear, okay? Obviously, all the drivers have to have that number two. Inside your Formula One, and why is everything like that? The driver is in trouble there because when the driver enters the wrong number, it doesn't show up, for example, like I'm sending to you there. Look, I was present for driver hashtag 15. See? So it would show hashtag 15 game of old 15. So here we put the name. At least it makes it better for us here. And then you can put the driver's name from your league. Next topic is the photos. So how are you going to add the photos? Okay. You go to the same folder in GS Options that we talked about at the beginning of the video, and then you'll see here, oh, driver, images, driver, images. All the photos of the drivers have to be here. I have more categories that I narrate here, so keep them separate, but all the photos have to be here. Oh, where are these here? They shouldn't be inside folders, okay? And another thing, the photos need to have a transparent background, and they have to be square. 
They need to be square at least 250 by 250 pixels, but can be 500 by 500 or 600 by 600. If you don't keep it square, it'll get distorted in the broadcast. Another important thing, the driver's name has to match exactly what's on the list. Do you see that there? The driver's photo must be perfect, no letters allowed. The driver's photo has to look just right. Rafael Rousseau has to be here too, and there can't be any letters. Look, divergent. I put this HUD here on the screen to explain something to you. Whenever you press a shortcut key, you'll see something on the screen. Will anything show up in the broadcast? And then what happens? Whenever it's a shortcut key that compares two drivers, there's this one, for example, that shows the difference in real time. There are a few more there. Two that uh, you have to keep the broadcast camera on the driver in the back. So the, the camera the face sees the battle between Julio and Tadeo. So the camera has to be on Tadeo. All right. On the driver that's behind to also show the driver in front. Okay. And to wrap up, the shortcut keys are in the file you receive after making your purchase. You already know that the link is here in the description. I think we've covered all the points. If you have any questions, my WhatsApp is here in the description. If you've made the purchase, ask the group. So just take your question to the group because it might be a question that other drivers or buyers have too. All right, thanks. So let's go. How do you put the Allo HUD uh, on the screen? For those of you playing on PC, it's easy. Just come here to Dash Studio, click on Overlays, and then the Halo, right? Click on New Layout. Let's go. Let it load for you who play on the console. You need to make a scheme to transmit your gameplay through BS. Okay. So first of all, we cut, click on Force Display. It will always be on the screen. And click on Edit Layout, okay? And then you'll have to position it according to your game. So you'll need to do both things. Open the game. Anything goes there. Put it there in your gameplay. Leave it where it is. Then you go, ah, positioned it. It's here. Okay, cool. Then you click on Stop Layout. Click here to force display because it will always be on the screen, all right? Forget this infinite screen here because that was the only way I could record this for you. So that's how the Halo HUD will be on the screen. Minimize this here. When you start the game, it will always be on the screen. Look there. Do you see? It's there on the screen, forced to show all the time, okay? So that's how it is. If you don't want it to show all the time, just disable it, okay? If you have any questions, just message me on WhatsApp. To have a nice layout for the HUDs, they need to be set up correctly in OBS. And when you purchase our product here, you'll already receive these scenes. So, to put these scenes in OBS, there's a small limitation. And we're going to do this setup now. This tool that I have here, which I'm going to show you, tools like source copy, load scene, paste scene, and so on, this doesn't come with OBS. So, I'm going to leave the link to this plugin here in the video description as well. Okay, just download it, install it, and then this function will appear for you. With this function activated, you load the source you received from our pack, and then you can copy and paste it into uh, your broadcast. And then after you finish, it will appear on the left side. See, you notice that driver's bottom appeared. Driver top is the same thing for the commentator pack. I'm just using a different example here. So how is it going to work? I want to emphasize that if you're a driver, you bought the driver pack. There's this initial scoreboard here that driver's faces have an initial scoreboard. It's not the same. In Formula One, only the three letters of each driver's name appear. And there's also the complete scoreboard. So if you're going to use the complete scoreboard, you'll need to make an adjustment here. All right. If you have any questions, just send them in the group that you now have access to since you purchased the product. After you've done this setup, you're going to open Sim Hub. And then right after that, you go to the driver's bottom. See, I double click here. This screen will appear. It's showing for you. And this URL will show up here. See, what are we going to do with this? Let's open SimHub. And then over in SimHub on the right side here, for example, that's what we're working on. Bottom drivers. So I'm going there. Bottom. I get the name right. Bottom 2024. Bottom drivers. So I click here on more and then I click on copy OBS. I copied the OBS. I go back to OBS. I open that screen I mentioned. And then I click here and do a C-Trail V to paste C. And I hit OK. Then it will load nicely. So that's the setup. Then you need to do the same for the bottom, the top, and the side. You need to copy and paste to make sure it works. All right, that's good for you. So if you have any questions, just send them in the group. Thanks. Take care.